This conference will now be recorded. Right. Uh, for MongoDBs, guys, uh, the Mongo replica set and sharding, these are the two big technologies which will add up a lot of weight to your resumes. So we're going to see in and out of it, what exactly, how exactly, and what type of different things we have. Uh, we're going to spend quite a long time on these two technologies, especially. Why? Because of uh, the, white, the amount of weightage for these two technologies that you have as a DBA. And you need to know if you are trying, if your company supporting or you are supporting this technology, you need to know in and out of the background as well as, uh, you know, theoretically, architecturally, everything. So we'll spend quite a amount of time on this one, especially focus on these technologies to become a core advanced DBA, especially. Right. So uh, a replica set. So let me, uh, anything, you know, like uh, before I talk uh, with the slides, I just wanted to make you understand what it is diagrammatically. I'll give you a fair idea how it works on all discussions. Then I'll open the slides. The slides will become dead simple when you understand this, basically. We'll call it as replica set, basically. So minimum, uh, we'll go with the three servers with the replica set. Minimum three mandatory. Why it is three? What, why don't we go with two? We, I'll explain all of that. So, uh, you know, like every server will have, of course, you know, your data will be modified in the memory and your data first will be written to the journal. From journal, it will get uh, hardened to the data file. Right, this is a usual that we discussed in the architecture in the beginning itself. First, all transactions at server level will get recorded on the journal. Then it will go to the data files, basically. That's how the data manipulations will happen in Mongo. Right, so all will follow in the background, same thing. And there's some special collection it will create under local database called oplog. This is a, one of the important component of replication. You need to understand how it is going to work. I'm going to talk about in and out of it. I don't leave anything behind for this technology. This is such an important technology, basically. So we'll have the terms called primary replica, prim primary member, okay, and secondary. And this is another secondary we are going to keep. I'm going to discuss a lot of situations with this. Uh, once you understand, then we'll go with the slides anyway. So if I have to name it, just I'll name it. Memory, this is a memory. Okay. Where everything will take place. This is a journal. Where all, you know, primarily will be uh, applied to the general first, then to data file. This is the data where actual data is sitting. Okay, this is called uh, op lock. And this is uh, one which actually does, uh, you know, like a replication in the background. And uh, you will have the application. Application always hit the primary for all operations, as long as you don't keep the for, for secondary configuration. How we can read from the secondaries only, uh, that's something we have to set at connection level. The connection will take care of that. And uh, you have a URI. You call all the servers together. By default, it will hit the primary. You want it to prefer, it will by default hit the secondary only. We have the connection string. We're going to see that. First, try to follow this for now. This is an application. So MongoDB by nature, we discussed all of that, guys. From general data, how frequently data will get written? 60 seconds or 2 GB of data when it is fills in the journal. Checkpoint case we discussed already. 60 seconds or 2 GB. You guys remember, I guess, we did, we spend on this a lot of time. So when data will get the rate of when it is seconds or two GB, whichever comes first, then the step point will trigger and the
the data will get synced up. But from memory T general, when it will get the data, every 50 milliseconds generally nature it can be milliseconds but million means what one uh, second uh, equal to thousand uh, milliseconds second we are talking about it's not a minute one second equal to mm -hmm. there is uh, there is a disturbance in your voice so <clears throat> yeah, but, you, uh, there is a disturbance in your voice so you <clears throat> initially what you explained for 60 seconds or 2 gb after that we missed couple uh, seconds Oh, is it so? Is it clear now? Yeah, right now it's clear, but in between it's uh, missing voice. Okay, fine. Sorry, I'll repeat. No, no. See, guys, in Mongo replica set, at least uh, three servers should be there. Uh, thanks, Biran, for just updating because I wouldn't have noticed. Yeah. So here, for replica set, Mongo replica set, minimum three servers are required for us. I want to give you the fair idea why we need three. Why not two? Uh, why two can suffice a configuration kind of uh, before it what i'm trying to say every machine will have a memory right where the application will hit the data and get the data into memory do that modification all that that modification first will record in the journal journal is like a log at server level in mongo we don't have a database level log files at the server level all transactions all changes that happens in the system First, we'll record in the journal everything on all databases and all collections, irrespective of the everything, just journal. You don't have a separate file where it logs. Every 50 milliseconds, generally, it will write all of its content, modified content, dirty data into journal. Then it'll give a confirmation to the application journal. It has to write in the journal. Then application would get the confirmation journal. That's how things go in the background. In case of Mongo, all of a sudden abruptly restarts, it picks up the data in the journal and come online with all the gap. If something actually, if it, it restarts that we already discussed. So now there is something, a new mechanism will come into picture here. The new mechanism is op log. Op log exactly what it does. Whenever it is writing the data to the journal, when you enable the op log, when you enable the replica set and the a particular machine, it will create the op log by default. That is the nature of Mongo. By default, it will create the op log. It will write the data into journal as well as into the op log. Simultaneous action. Simultaneous action, it writes into journal and replica set, basically. So in every machine, you follow the same thing. Like it will come to the memory, then journal, op log, and data. Memory, op log, data. Like that, it will go on. So but here, the changes only will take place in the primary. And the secondaries are only the standby. It will sync from here and here. Okay. Now, actually, this is responsible for sending to this. This is only responsible for sending to this one as well. It won't sync from the secondary again. This is how the data will transfer. So, whenever the changes happens here, it immediately sync with the secondary member automatically. It's no need to ask. It's inbuilt function. It will go and sync with the next microsecond itself. Whenever it receives in the op log. It will try, try to push the change into this op log, this op log automatically. And then from here, the dish data will get updated in interval of 50 milliseconds or lesser, lesser than that. It depends on the system availability. As soon as the op log is synced up from primary to secondary, data will be applied to the secondary server data directories basically here. Okay. So the, the main. <laughs> Got so you. in uh, secondary, it's not going to follow flow from memory to general. No, no, no. It is only op log. This is the only thing. No memory, no general. It just goes through the op log to op log. Op log mm -hmm. is responsible. It's, it's it's something is accumulated. All if example this is down, this will keep the data. At least uh, depends on the size of the op log. When it comes online, whatever the gap is there, it will pick up automatically. If example, I'll I'll talk about all of this anyway. First, uh, let's understand the architecture. So the sync will happen like this. Primary is responsible for writing all your data. Only one copy may one server. Copy means one server is actually allowed to write. The rest you can keep up to only readable. You can keep one primary, 49 secondaries. 49 total, 50 Mongo instances you can keep in a single replica set. In a single replica set. 
we never do that but that is, that is a limitation if someone asks you how many nodes we can add in a single replica i said 50. this data level as what do you it is server level it you see replica set you don't have a choice to choose one database only i can uh, replicate it kind of when you enable the replica it is by default server level in mongo you don't have a database level replication it is absolutely at server level whatever you have byte by byte will reflect here everything everything that you have in the here it is there here and here there is no database level replication here complete server complete server to server that's it you don't have an option in mongo to just replicate one single database basically we don't have that technology in mongo like uh, we what we have in rdbms replications all the object level database level server level we have all that in mongo we don't have that it is server to server itself there's no option for us and sharding is something it's a complete distribution of data that does not even talk about again object or database it is complete server distribution of what you uh, even sharding is a collection level we, that is something we will see don't i don't want to get the, get it to that side because you will confuse now first understand the replication primary will receive all the right operations it is simultaneously right into general and op log from op log it will sync with the secondary op log we will see i'll do the transaction i'll i'll do the entry i'll show the entry here the same entry will reflect here same entry will reflect here same data instantly available in these data directories data files i mean we'll read data everything in and out first we'll understand it so now you can keep one primary in one replica set no two primaries at all and 49 can be possible we don't do that but this is a possibility of Is my audio clear? I think, uh, yeah, now, now I see that there's a lag of few seconds, Ravi. Uh, just a minute, I'll get uh, my mobile net. Maybe my internet uh, giving me issue. Just, just a minute, I'll be back. Now it's better. One minute, guys. Sure. Maybe my internet is not stable, it seems. So I'll switch the connection. The mobile. Uh, is it, can you hear me? I guess it won't be an interruption now on what I feel. Can you hear me, guys? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, okay good enough. Just let me know if you see that uh, there is a lag. Uh, maybe the Wi-Fi was having the issue. Okay, good enough. Okay, guys. So now, there is something again. Out of these many machines, 50 machines, only seven machines can involve into voting. See what happens in this case. Why we went with the three node? Why not two? Two? Why not two are not sufficient? Basically, one primary, one secondary is enough, right? Why we go with two secondaries? Actually, you must go with the two secondary. The reason behind is there is a voting involved in the background when failure happens. If example, this primary is down. If this primary is down, it will fail over automatically to secondary. Two second, one of the secondary to become primary there is voting involves in it in the background what kind of voting basically n equal to n by 2 plus 1 it is mandated to follow this voting then only a primary will be elected so if it is three example if it is three uh, one node goes down then how many it will become two two by two plus one equal to two so if you see three three off is 1.5 two is greater than that so i mean if you see most if example if i have um what i would say if i have a five nodes 
five nodes four secondaries one primary if primary goes down what happens basically four by two plus one so in this case what happens two plus one three so uh, it will sustain basically so uh, what exactly it mean uh, whatever the value you have make it off and plus one and that value if it is satisfying primary will be elected if not it won't elect basically it, it is a rule example if i have uh, seven at least four nodes to be available then only the primary will be elected at least four load should four nodes should be live we, why because seven of actually 3.5 it is more than that it is more than that see try to understand this guys this election is very very important to understand if i have three nodes i have only two nodes as you may guess if one node goes down only one node will be left behind if one node left behind no election only the secondary will remain secondary only it never become a primary it need at least two odds to become a primary it need minimum two odds to become it's like a quorum even um, clustering also uh, windows clustering we have two node cluster we have we'll have a quorum also if quorum goes down one of the node goes down the other one will, will not take the ownership that won't come online basically because quorum lost even the 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 primary node also gone so both if go gone it will go to the you know like uh, it will not come online basically okay so the same thing here also you need a voting you need a voting to become a primary to become a uh, when primary goes down say secondary to become primary it need this many odds basically okay n by 2 plus 1 always should be satisfied to get that basically so whenever we go with uh, any configuration we'll go with the odd nodes 3 5 7 9 10 something like this so 11 by the way i never seen going beyond uh, 5 basically three itself is a maximum 99 percent people will follow the uh, three node replica set one primary two secondaries and one more thing is called arbiter arbiter is also very important everywhere 90 percent of the people one data set one primary data one secondary data one is a dummy data dummy node not data dummy node which will involve into voting to if primary goes down the primary secondary will become primary because this is going to give a vote we'll call it as arbiter node basically arbiter node does not hold the data at all it's just a mongo service which will add into the mongo member as a member that will just vote so that if primary goes down one node will become a primary because it is it is eligible to become a primary because it is receiving the two votes uh you guys are trying to follow or confusing say something this is important yeah. point it's confusing right see uh, first you need three nodes first why because you need a voting majority of the voting you have a three you have three no three nodes if if you have only two nodes as a case only two nodes you have it if this ha this formula has to be satisfied to become a primary so if one node goes down what happens one by two point five plus one so one point five it is not satisfying the it is not satisfying the rule basically it is not satisfying the rule because you have two nodes two nodes is not divisible by two basically right even if it is divisible 0 0.5 0 0.5 plus 1 1.5 1 1.5 is actually not majority from 3 if you look at uh, the better way uh, i'll explain directly without formula also we can explain you, i can make you understand anyway without formula but anyway formula will be followed in the background see guys you need at whatever the situation if i have a seven seven nodes seven nodes off is 3.5 if you if i have four nodes availability i can get the i can get the primary elected if it is five if it is five node replica three should be online to get the to get the election started because it is five off of five 2.5 but three is higher than that basically so you need to look at this direction if you have a three nodes two nodes should be available if it is five nodes three nodes should be available if it's seven nodes four nodes should be available to start the election if not 
even you are keeping seven nodes in the replica set but four nodes are down three nodes are alive there is no election all will remain as a secondary only they don't start the election because they are not having the enough of voting the number of nodes the number of vote it, it it is getting is lesser than the actual one it is it is always required you divide it by this thing okay it is 3.5 3.5 and if you three nodes are down if three nodes are down it will become four nodes right out of seven three nodes are down it will become four if four nodes are down it will become three so it this value is higher think in this direction the formula leaves the formula behind and try to understand so the actual node divided by two divided by two example 3.5 so if three nodes are gone out of seven four it is becoming this value is greater than this greater than this so election will start the same way if it is three 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 uh, nodes case three by two three by two equal into how much 1.5 if you divide so how much how many nodes i need to have at least a minimum two nodes should be available all the time if it is a five five by two if you look at it is 2.5 2.5 you keep in this way in your mind it will absolutely become easy so three nodes should be available to become a primary three nodes should become should available to take the primary role then only election will start if not election will not start does it make sense if it is seven 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 by two okay what is seven by two three point five three point five so how many nodes i need alive to start the election four it's a four definitely should be there then only election will start if not no election all will become stay as a secondary only no right operation can happen in that direction if that is the case you guys following so in simple language i think in simple language more than half node should be available to exactly bring the that, exactly what you said is absolutely right statement more than half more than half means if you have seven you need to have four if you have five you need to have three more than half more than half of the servers you wanted that is the best word she picked up i would say no confusion at all more than off more than off means one node extra more than off see one, one extra here one extra or off extra whatever it is more than off so off the 1.5 it is more it is off 2.5 it is more it is off 3.5 it is more so it is available that is the best word you picked up thanks for that so now see here in in the real world let me conclude this See, op log is something which is responsible for sending the data to secondaries. If one secondary is down, assume a case, one secondary is down, and op log is holding, assume a case, three hours data, three, three hours modification it is holding, then it is flushing, it is capped collection. We, op log is a by default capped collection. It will depend, it will depend on the amount of data disk size. Okay, if you have 100 GB in the data disk data disk you have 100 gb it will create 5 gb op log if you have 1 tb in the op log assume a case 50 gb it can create 50 gb op log very big uh, there is a formula for this again it's not something we can just uh, i can make a word i just write this exactly op log size op log size means this is the size we are talking about right now try to understand this is another big point i'm making here to understand op log size depends on the size of the data drive it is automatic you don't control it it is by default by nature you can change it if you want it if you can change it if you want it how do you change also we'll see that but by default when you configure the replica set it will configure the replica op, op log by default you cannot configure it will configure but you can extend the size if you want it but by default how much space it will take my person uh, uh this is about the memory right op log size this is about uh, right this is the one this is one we are talking about it is in memory then 50 mb it will start with it will go up to 50 gb as a maximum if it is a white tiger it will take 990 mb by default op log size minimum is 990 mb the maximum it can go up to 50 gb only it cannot go beyond it 
this is the maximum this is the minimum so example example as you make case i have got 10 gb in the data directory how much it will take five percent of it first five percent see default top lock says five percent of your data disk space data drive disk space 10 gb how much it will take for a one gb how much 50 mb right half, half GB. no 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 half gb how come all right half gb right 500 mb your cut so 10 gb 500 mb means it is not qualifying the minimum so it will take five 990 only it's not something if it is not for qualifying the minimum it will take minimum if I have only if in our direction, oh, VM got shut down. Really? Just a minute, I'll quickly start. I mean, I'll just show it. I'll just show it. I mean, we don't talk about any practical today. There is a lot of things you need to understand. Then I'll enter into practical. Tomorrow, I'll start the practicals. But now, just try to understand this. If you understand, then I can talk all practicals. You can easily catch. You need to understand the background. I'll spend three more class on this one, on this especially the replica set. Right, it is up. So if I go to the machine, if I see the disk file system, what I have, come on. Where did we place the files? We place the files in the where. This is what your data directory. What is the capacity of this drive? This will look for this one, not the available one. It look for the capacity of the data drive of that Mongo. If it is a 6 GB, what is a 5 percent? 300 MB. 300 MB is not the case. You, you definitely have to pick up the 990 MB, the size of the uh, block. It doesn't mean that it is going to occupy the 9, 990 MB by default. No, it will capital collection size is 990 MB. OK, then whatever the data is keep coming in the block, then it will occupy the actual storage at the back end. See if I have one TB data directory. It will it will pick up a 50 GB by default. One TB means 1050. Five percent of 150 is becomes a 50 GB. 50 GB is a maximum. If you are configuring, it is not going to occupy the 50 GB at OS level. It just a capital collection up to 50 GB. As data is going to insert into the cap this op log, then it will occupy the actual storage in the background. Following or not following? This statement is very important again. See, the oplock size is a minimum 990 MB. It's a minimum, irrespective of the size you have in the data drive. You, if you have 1 GB drive in the data directory, oplock itself is going to take 1 GB. You cannot configure the replication. You def definitely need to have at least 6, 7 GB in the direct data directory where you're trying to do. Uh, 6, 7 is not required, at least 2 GB. 1 GB is given to this one. You are playing with a small data, which is fine, at least, basically. So 990 MB is by default op lock size. Op lock does not occupy the storage directly on, from the OS side. As the data is keep loaded into the op lock, op lock if it is going to go up to 990 MB, then it will occupy the storage. It's just a capital collection. It can go up to that point. I'll show the all of this when we configure it anyway. Now, assume a case that this op lock is holding three hours data, three hours data, and secondary is down. It came online after three hours, 10 minutes. So what happens in this case? Three hours data after three hours, it is data is flushing because it is capped already. And this has a 10 minutes gap. It never sync anymore. It will not take the data. Why? Because it knows till what point it is synced. And it has to know where it has to start as well. It knows internally. You don't need to worry. Mongo secondary will not pick up the data if there is any gap happened because of it went down too long. You have to sync manually if it goes out of sync. Very simple sync. Sync is very simple in Mongo, but you need to understand if op log directory, op log, how much data it is holding up, within that time, secondary should come online. If secondary is not coming online, if it, some data, even one second data is flushed out without syncing, secondary will not pick up the data anymore. 
why because the gap is it knows gap is created and don't take the data even if i take the data i don't make sense i don't i don't operate with the data gap so you have to sync it manually what are the possible ways we can sync it manually uh, we we're going to see that situation to situation scenario i'll create a situation i'll show you how it can be synced we'll see that all of that a lot of scenarios i'll run through especially two classes are practical one is a configuration two more are only issues in the uh, a replica set roughly three hours issues we will talk about every issue will take 10 to 15 only there are a lot of issues we have so i'm going to pick up all possible issues that i faced in my career okay because this is such an important technology you need to know so now i'll conclude this architecture first we need a three member replica set it is a minimum one data one secondary with the data third one can be arbiter just an arbiter arbiter does not pick up the data does not pick up the data only it will just run as a mongod and it will join as a member it does not take the data it will act like a voting member voting member means if primary goes down this should become a primary it will vote okay are you i'm voting you also vote one so you get the majority of the vote and you become the primary it is taking the handing the primary role to the secondary by giving the vote arbiter means arbiter does not hold the data at all it's just a member it does not even receive the data this is a famous configuration everywhere see we have roughly 60 to 70 production replica set servers production i'm talking about 60 to 70 production mongo replica sets we are running with the data only enterprise if you take about there are hardly we have 12 to 15 servers production mongo servers we are running most of the infrastructure and the community edition because it is free no zero money you don't need to pay anything as long as you are not going for the support if you are going for support anyway you have to pay and we are subscribed for the support also for community edition we are paying for the support to the mongodb for community edition we are saving the licensing cost size licensing is little more costly than the support so we our clients are preferred to have a community edition and get the support most of the time we will only fix it 99 percent in a month also in a overall year we might talk to them or five or six times because of some product bug because of it goes you know a product itself is having some issues then we'll end we'll talk to them we'll rectify them we'll gain the knowledge out of them that's how it is going to happen in the enterprise some critical data some enterprise clients are running i mean very critical data we are running on the enterprise and enterprise will have a lot of automation taking the database backups automatically point in time recovery is fully automated and monitoring if anything goes down you'll get an alerting and encryption is available so some major major features are deprecated in the community edition you, you don't get it so only in enterprise you you will get it so critical data will go towards the enterprise side normal data you can operate with the community side that's how and everybody is looking in the market to save the money when mongo see community edition enterprise edition was data wise both are equally capable handling the data only the features are deprecating so in if you take about sql server the capacity is actually standard edition to enterprise edition there is a huge variation standard edition you can pick up only 24 cpus 128 gb ram if it is enterprise you can you can claim how many cpus you have on the machine 512 cpus it will claim and 1 tb ram 2 tb ram it will pick up basically so there is huge variation in terms of data handling in mongodb there is no variation in terms of data handling except the features features in terms of monitoring in terms of backups in terms of uh, encryption in terms of all monitor, uh, monitoring kind of there are four or five features which are major for enterprise especially for critical data they are deprecated but community edition as good as enterprise in terms of data handling except these features okay that is the reason replication is highly implemented and uh, to save the money everywhere every anywhere you go replica set is mandatory configuration you may not see the sharding but replication is mandatory for every production right anyway let's move on so no question this, yeah, yeah go ahead sorry please. so this uh, replica set should have sorry my i'm i'm trying to understand it's like three servers or it's mm. kind of a cluster we don't say it is a cluster it is a replica set basically either we this class it is kind of a cluster only you can say in terms of rdms terminology in Mong, no SQL terminology we don't say it as a cluster replica sets why do we change it yes yes if you take the you know like a 
normal uh, in terms of understanding an RDBMS terms, it is a cluster. It is a cluster. If it is an RDBMS terminology, but in Mongo terminology, we don't say it as a cluster, only replica sets. Three servers okay. are the same. Three nodes on the same server. Yes. Uh, this is one node is one server. This is another node with the secondary. It's another node is another secondary. I mean, machines are separated, not in the same machine. All are all are different machines. Different machines. And different, absolutely different. If one goes down, these sh physically both should be available. If you keep it primary and arbitrary in a single machine, if it goes down, uh, one primary will become automatically secondary. There is something you know. If secondary is gone down, the arbitrary is also gone down. The primary auto will be given secondary. There is no role primary role because there is no enough voting to you know to sustain as a primary. Primary no need to fail. Even secondary fail, arbitrary fail, or secondary data nodes fail. Anything happen, only one left behind out of three. Even if it is primary left behind at the end, that also will become secondary automatically because it did not get the enough of voting to sustain as a primary. all the time all the time more than our fault should be given then only the primary will sustain if not primary also will become secondary automatically following say something i'll start the slides if you understood this yes sir i'm following everyone followed if you have any question please let me know I am absolutely okay to talk because this is something important. Slides I can go through quickly. Why? Because all I have discussed the same thing is there in the slides. The op log okay. is uh, logical, logical separation or a physical. Physically, it is. Uh, it's a physical. physical. It's a, it is a collection physically exists, which all the uh, upcoming data what you are entering in the Mongo. Whatever is writing into general, it is writing also in another copy in the op, op log. How good. voting will happen? Good question. This is a very good question. See, you have a tree node, good enough. You don't have a choice that one arbiter to one data node, and this goes down, this will pick up automatically because this has the data. This has the data. This is only eligible to become a primary in three node replica. 99% only three, three node replica. No one will follow the of five node replica kind of if someone is really have a, that kind of architecture what happens example one arbiter four data nodes let's talk about this situation quickly you have five nodes as he is asked how the voting can happen in three node replica the voting only between the two i mean the primary secondary role can only happen between the two only so whatever the servers are available they can vote because they joined as a member it knows internally mongod to mongod polling will happen every five millisecond five millisecond is too less uh, we will see that five millisecond 10 10 seconds not five millis 10 seconds it will poll basically five seconds but 10 seconds it will do the failover so this is arbiter assume again this is a data node primary data node this is a secondary this is a secondary this is a secondary if this is gone down it got the four votes it will sustain if this this is also gone down, okay, uh, okay let's take it the other way. So this is a primary and this is the arbiter. Primary gone down. There are three secondaries which should become a primary now because there are four voting which can form the primary role out of these three secondaries, right? So whichever is immediately hop, network hop, this is the nearest to hop means nearest IP in the next IP range this is holding the next immediate ip and it is keeping the most most recent data out of all two things will be checked when before one become a primary in the background one is one is recent data first data validity it will take check for the data whichever the member has the next microsecond recent data with the primary immediate data if this is qualifying with the data there is no hop eligibility if all have the recent data because of their all are sitting in the same data center then it look for the network hop what is the next immediate ip hop is coming that will become a primary two cases will followed one is the data recently you know like whichever has the very latest data with the primary whichever got synced with the latest data primary that is the first thing if all are got the same data because all are in the same data center next thing is next immediate ip it can be 
whichever has the next immediate IP, it will pick up. Two conditions will be validated. And if it is the same data center, assume a case if it is the same data center, maybe this got uh, delayed in you know, a few microseconds, though it is a second uh, immediate hop, but it, it has some delay for some reason. It will go to the next uh, node as, as a primary automatically. That is a fully internal mechanism. Anyway, you keep it remote one. For some reason, local one is actually not syncing well because it is a, has some network fluctuations. It has some microseconds data. It will go and pick up the remote somewhere. It is a, you know some far miles away. Still, it will become a primary because the local one is not holding all the data because of fluctuations. Okay, so it, it look for the data recent availability and next network hub. Two two conditions, any of those valid, then it will pick up. And not first data, then a network hub. So let's come to the module. And this is it is valid if I have everything of the same configuration? Absolutely same. Same MongoD and same data disk in both the one. It is if it is arbiter, everything is same, identical. That's it. Single word. Identical means in terms of operating system, in terms of Mongo version in terms of data drives structure and everything should be identical to operate well and memory cpu and everything so why is memory secondary you don't do too much but why you need because it, it can fail over here when it is failover if you don't have a you know similar uh, uh, system power then it will it will not give the same performance so both should be identical this is something if example i have a 2 tb data as you may guess 2 tb data but 2 db data at least 400 gb is recommended in mongo i'll talk about memory management separately we'll talk about that here 2 db data and you have 32 cpus as you may guess here also 32 cpus 2 db ram it's mandatory so third node why we don't keep as a data node generally because of to save the infrastructure here also 2 cpus and 2 uh, 400 gb ram is not something is a huge cost to the company there is a reason i'll run this one with the 3 gb ram one cpu Still, it works. One CPU, three GB RAM is enough. Just it is a MongoD, just voting it does not do anything. Voting it, so if it does not need the data, two TB storage, it does not need the memory and CPU also. Just need the MongoDB to run. That's it. Nothing else it wanted, but it should be on the same version. All should be sit on the same version. Is it clear? Yes. Is it right. Good enough. So let's move on. Replication guys see replication provides redundancy and increase the data availability That is the intention of the high availabilities You wanted to keep the redundant data in case of disaster one node goes down other node should pick up the load To keep the availability of the data increase the availability of the data Replication also allows you to recover from the hardware failure and service interruptions Whatever the reason the node goes down other node will pick up it can be hardware or software whatever it is you have a data resilience in that direction some cases you can use replication to increase the read capacity this is something good you are using only writes here you can only read from here you mention its connection level when they read read intent there is something extra function we have read intent is secondary the connection automatically will hit the secondary and read the data from secondary they have to mention in the connection when they're trying to talk to the server we have that in the next slides no need to worry so clients have the ability to send the rewrite operation to different servers reads to one server writes to one server you mention when you're doing it you can also maintain the copies in different data centers to increase the locality and availability of data for the distributed applications maybe uh, you know this is also data set this is also this is one data center because it's a local and I'm keeping this in a different data center and sending all of the data and all reporting will happen from here. All reporting. All business is going on here, but the end, at the end of the day, reporting is running on the remote secondary server. Both the servers in no need to be in the same region. See, I have done a lot of migrations recently from one data center to other data center within the cloud, even in the on-premise also, because one of the our client data center lease was over and is charging too much you wanted to migrate to new data center we did seamlessly in three or four months it took three and a half months basically we targeted very rigorously because lease is over 
if we, we stay more and more they are they are actually charging more and more for because we did not renew the license with them anyway so i'll i'll talk about how do we migrate using the replica set this is the best technology to do the migration upgradation everything everything is seamless application don't see the downtime uh, without the downtime you can achieve the upgrades even migrations both with the help of replica sets all right you can keep one copy in the remote region and uh, primary region use for the writes remote region use for the reporting for data locality because in the remote region they want the reporting so we are keeping one node in the remote region data is replicating there and pulling the reports from there with the additional copies of data you can dedicate to one to disaster recovery one for reporting one or backup so i wanted to read from this one and i wanted this one as a dr only all the time so i wanted this only for writes as a primary tees you can you can see it is something you are calling the physical name it will talk to the physical name if failover happens again you need to know the secondary and then call the data from there remote region only for the dr purpose we are keeping it in case of the whole primary disaster you know the complete data center is gone you still have the data in the remote region that way it is going to help you out see actually before uh 2.6 something before we will we used to call as a replica set as master slave replication this was old name master slave replication was the old name of replica set now we are calling as replica set from 3.0 i guess 3.0 i'm not sure exactly but the old name of replica set is master slave replication it used to be the name but now we'll call it as a replica set okay so master slave replication also the same thing one master multiple secondaries there we'll call it a slave now we are calling a secondary replica primary replica this is a word only wordings are changed master slave replication was the old replication mode supported by mongo in older version of mongo this mode was used for backup failover and scaling there also purpose is same the names are different that's it nothing else however master slave replication provides less redundancy does not automatic uh, failover oh we did not have automatic failover maybe i did not work with the 1.6 1.0 kind of thing when i started the servers were running 3.0 2.6 also i have seen 2.6 servers but very limited time they migrated to 2.2 3.6 and 3 2.c most of the servers i supported <clears throat> on the white tiger in the map even i did not work much because uh, 3.2 was introduced and long ago 3.2 introduced long ago 2014 around i guess if you wanted me to check quickly we can check it off i'm not sure come on where is this mongo version support let's go with the mongo maybe this will give the better thing I mean, dates also will give you when it started. I feel. Come on, they did not give. Somewhere I showed you guys. All right, this is the one. All right, if you see when three point two was released, three point two, two thousand fifteen. I started roughly five years ago. So this 3.2, 3.0, 3.0 White Tiger was introduced. I worked most of my career with the three White Tiger itself. Uh, MMP one has a lot of limitations and drawbacks and all that was the discussion when I started. But most of the 2.6 I have seen. 2.4 I never seen in my career working on that one. Basically, 2.6 I have seen working on that one. 3.0 we used to do the storage migrations, not the version migrations. Like uh, 3.0 you, you know was running on the MMP one. We we migrated the data from MMP one to storage engine. That I, I I do remember that part. We did only the storage engine migration, not the version migration. I have I would have had the those documents. I guess long. Uh, I definitely would have had. I need to check. But how we do the storage migration is a separate topic. I mean that is no more valid anymore. Why? Because you are on the top one. It is like uh, more than six years back. What I'm trying to say. We did a storage migration because MMP even was not scaling well, and White Tiger was introduced that time, and White Tiger was giving lot of benefits. So client asked us to plan for the storage migration. We did on lot of servers storage migration in the Mongo. 
from mrp1 to uh, uh, white tiger storage that we performed that i i remember still but 2.6 was having some issues and i was i did not uh, explore much the lower than that maybe that time this could be the case there is an automatic failover kind of could be sorry mongodb supports replication with another concept called replica set this is a new term replica set provides the functionality of master slave deployment internally it is following the same thing except the automatic failover names and all replica sets are also more robust for production use this can handle any amount of data as long as your system is capable of as a standalone if more and more data definitely go for the sharding to distribute the data a replica set a replica set is a group of mongodb instances that holds the same data absolutely same data everywhere whatever you keep is a data node one mongodb primary receives all the right operation irrespective of number of nodes 15 nodes you can form in a single replica set only one writable the rest are all readable and you have 50 means 50 does not involve voting only seven nodes can vote at a time you are keeping 10 mongo instances only seven can vote 10 cannot vote the voting only can happen between seven nodes only 50 cannot involve into the voting that is also one more point you need to keep in mind one mongo d uh, the primary receives all write operations all other instances secondary applies the operation from primary so that they have the same data set that's what primary will go through the op lock op lock to op lock data will sync and secondary will get updated the primary accepts no. all the right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sorry so basically if the seven servers are um, participating in the replication and uh, four of them will be uh, eligible so what about what happens with the other three servers see first seven servers will involve into voting seven servers okay right. like you have then seven servers can pick up uh, any server having the recent data they will become a primary seven nodes here this is primary this are all second assume case if this mm -hmm. goes down any of this one can become a primary out of all right so you have to keep more and more the more and more will just stand by if okay. these seven also gone down this will pick up the set again to involve in the voting one if if it is going you know like you don't keep this many i never seen just only the theoretical discussion in the real time nobody implement that many written and data that impossible because infrastructure cost is also involved in the background so seven nodes only can vote even you go beyond that configuration that is a limitation of voting if this first set is gone anyway you have further note though will they will vote if the vote is off the off more than off then it will form the primary but at a okay. time at a time only seven notes can vote so in case yeah. if it does not meet meet its uh, requirements of having four servers uh, available then that means it will it will consider that the server is offline or something like that yeah if it is not reaching it is polling internally when you add a member it is polling internally and checking which nodes are available which node is down actually how many nodes i have i may i can hold the primary role or i am I'm, i cannot hold it it primary is always checking the server secondary servers uh, voting all the time every 5 seconds it will check internally every 5 seconds polling happen in the background all right we'll see that we have the text also i kept it so the primary accept all the right operations from clients replica can hold only one primary can become out of all the replica set replica set provide the strict consistency for all read from the primary primary will have the latest data secondary may have some delay depends on the secondary server capability secondary server bandwidth primary to secondary server between the bandwidth availability all matters it can be 100% synced or not synced by default it is asynchronous replica set follow the asynchronous if you wanted to make it synchronous you can go with the right concern right concern you add it in the your right operation but by default we cannot enforce it is synchronous by default we we going to talk about that by the end of the uh, discussion we have that replica set guys this is yeah go ahead please so we cannot have active active replica no where it no. keeps writing to both servers only one only one is a writable all secondaries are readable no active active 
Okay. In Mongo, only one writable, the rest are all readable. Active Active is not there. Right. So replica set. A replica set provides strict consistency for reads from the primary. Primary will hold all the data to read. You will read the latest up to the point. To support replication, primary logs changes to its data sets in the op log file. The secondary replica see the secondary rep, secondaries replicate the primary's op log and apply the operation to their data set. That is what I said. The data will go to the secondaries through the op log only. That is what the statement is saying. The secondary replica, uh, the secondaries replicate the primary's log file and apply the operation to the data sets. Secondaries apply the operation from the primary asynchronously. There is no synchronous. This is also a point I already made. If the primary is unavailable, replica set will elect the primary to become a primary based on the number of votes it receives. It can become a primary. It cannot become a primary based on the number of votes off more than off more than off. If you are receiving the votes, your one of the node will become primary. If not, no. Or block. The record of operations kept by the master called oplog short see oplog oplog short form is op, full form is operation log oplog will call it as op but oplog in term is called as operations log basically oplog is stored in the special database called local and we we're going to see that it's not worry it will create in the local itself and we can read it this collection capped collection that I said and uh, I was talking about this uh, capacity also right where it was. I was showing the capacity of the right here 990 MB of the 5% of the data disk space minimum is 990 MB if it is not qualifying if it is qualifying the 990 MB it will start it can go up to 50 GB maximum each document in the op log represent a single operation every operation will record as an independent entry in the op log you're writing you're writing one right command to command it will record Command if you're running a command the same command will re reflect and the same command will go and reflect on the target also We'll see I mean, I'm going so to show that when I'm... Sorry. So basically the data comes from the application to the memory and from memory to the journal and then journal to Oplog or from memory to Oplog Memory to Oplog General to Oplog is not there it simultaneous writes to the Oplog and general both Oh, okay. Simultaneous. So it's simultaneous. Oplog is that stores only operation that change the state of the database. If you are reading, no entries in the log oplog. Only modifications will go into the oplog. As simple as it is. Right. Automatic failover. When a primary does not communicate with other member, other members of the set for more than 10 seconds, failover will happen. 10 seconds, so, you know, like it is given 10 seconds time. Primary is actually, you know, like current primaries failed. Second primary to elect prim, uh, secondary, second, uh, secondary to become primary takes 10 seconds in the background. 10 seconds time to pick up the role and start giving the response as a primary, basically. If something goes also, it will take 10 minutes to detect and do the failover all as well. The failover threshold is 10 seconds. If someone asking you what is the Mongo failover threshold is 10 seconds. This is what you have to say. The replica set will attempt to elect another member to become a new primary. The first secondary that receives the majority of the votes become the primary. Majority of the votes based on the recent data, based on the next hop Im immediately. Next IP, which can uh, immediately available. Two things it will consider. First data, recent data. Next is next hop. These two things validated and primary one of the secondary will become a primary based on that. Replica set members. A replica set in MongoDB group of MongoDB proxy. It's a group of MongoDB process that provides the redundancy and availability. First slide itself. Primary receives all the right operations. Second is replicate operations from the primary to maintain the identical data. Primary is for write only. The secondaries will get the data from primary to keep the identical data. Arbiter. Arbiter, what it does, it just only OAT, does not do anything. That is, I picked up. Arbiter is required just to order the to, to become one of the secondary to be primary. If not, the secondary will remain secondary only. Arbiter do not keep the copy of the data. However, arbiters play a role in the election that elect the primary if the current primary is unavailable. Only voting purpose, we keep the arbiter. One primary data node, one secondary data node. This is only arbiter with the lowest configuration I discussed, right? 
you have a 2 tb 4 400 gb ram 32 cpus but here 1 g 3 gb and 1 cpu is enough that way it is just voting node starting from 3.0 a replica stick can have up to all right this is 3.0 okay i did not remember when it is introduced 50 members this is something good from 3.0 you have a 50 member replica set but only seven members can vote to elect the primary this is the statement i was making all the time 50 members but seven only can vote at a time whatever is there in the group seven members can vote seven within that the election will form and the new primary will be elected if you have more than that some servers are keep down other server will pick up the role anyway but at the at the same time seven vote seven members can vote it not more than that right this is the situation guys type of replications we have i'm going to show everything what i'm talking here what i'm going to show practically it's not just a theory at all just have things in mind i'm going to pick up every type of replication we have a lot of different type of different secondary members for a different purpose we configure it basically priority zero replica set member see when you have three replica set and in the remote region you have a data dependency because they are generating the reports so now i'll keep the member priority to zero we can keep it in the config file how do we build the config file how do we change the config file on the fly we will say that we will see that in the course itself for now two servers in data center one one server in data center two this server is always required for the reporting they are fully dependent on this one but it never should become a primary even in the case of primary failure it should become a primary all the time even you know example these two servers are gone it will remain same secondary only if one of the server is available here it will become a primary because this can out this will form the hot but it cannot form it will it cannot become a primary at all why because you don't want to make it a primary it is remote region it is a remote region where you don't you never want to if primary goes down this will become primary if this is also gone this will remain secondary only whenever one of the server comes online it will become automatic primary again so primary you wanted to keep the role in the primary data center only all the time then primary zero replica set member can be configured we will see this we'll see this we are going to i'm going to show this clearly i'll do the uh, failover it only switch between these two nodes you never touch this one even it no need to be in the remote region just configuration is enough priority zero you are mentioning means don't go to that as simple as this i have a question Ravi. yeah, yeah go ahead uh replicated uh, <clears throat> nodes shouldn't be on a different data center than uh, one because it can be uh, anywhere. yeah because if it one can. data if, if one data center goes down mm. then uh, or both primary and secondaries are going to go down okay you're talking about the whole data center so then it's a very big disaster anyway you have the data this one you can make it a primary forcibly if you wanted manually but uh, practically it shouldn't be like a way around like primary is a secondary on the data centers two should become primary in case of failure of primary no 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 no. see data center case you are taking about worst case situation the whole data center is down and you are fully dependent on secondary only to operate with the data you can make this primary at force command we have force command to make the secondary also a primary that something is the last option we will call it off but as long as you it is in you know like uh, in west us is in east us you wanted to make the data because from here people are pulling the report this is also work as a disaster recovery as well you don't think like complete data center it, it one go it is going down maybe you it is like once in a blue moon kind of you may see you may not see in your lifetime it can so as long as this is available work from here only in a worst case i'll, I'll make this primary manually mm -hmm. It is like, no, like uh, in, uh, uh, my past experience i had uh, two incidents like uh, data center completely went down one was mm -hmm. due to storage and one was due to uh, network mm -hmm. issue mm -hmm. so that's why that's why i was thinking about having a secondary which should become primary on a different data center rather than on the same right see this you have control this can become a primary because all the time that can be you know once in a while in a lifetime going whole data center down not all the time so if this is gone down anyway we can make this secondary with a force command mm -hmm. 
got it that something that something is in, intentional because situation is demanding it we have to be flexible enough it, it it does that so but anyway as long as this is primary uh, this primary data center is up and running this is only the primary if this is gone down it still says secondary and if you really want to operate from there we can make it primary manually how do we do it is the course again the practical part mm -hmm. Priority member is a secondary. Uh, Santosh, you were asking. To, uh, sorry, you can go ahead if you have the question still. Yeah, I think Biran question was in general like RDMS. Generally, we have primary and secondary. Where primary will be in one data center and secondary will be in another data center. Typically, in RDMS. Right. right. So, but right. whereas here CLIT, we are, yeah, uh, we are taking the advantage of two nodes. Minimum one data, one primary data and secondary data is also mandatory. So. Here we are taking this advantage to keep the local primary right copy. You don't keep the remote copy it uh, remotely and then operate. Performance delays will be there. So this it's is intentional. Cost. Yeah, intentional more, cost. More, we are giving more HA concept than DR. I mean, like more HA availability is more. Right, right. That's correct. Priority member is a secondary that cannot become primary. Priority member can trigger the election. It can form the voting. Priority member zero can maintain a copy of the data set, absolutely all the data, accept read operations and votes in election. Priority member is useful in multi data center deployments. This is the case. In a three member replica set, one data center hosts the primary and secondary, and the secondary data center will host the uh, secondary of with the priority zero member that can become cannot become a primary. Priority zero member can function as a standby all the time as a standby as a data recovery as well as reporting both you can take the advantage of it next uh, hidden replica this is another big uh, thing uh, hidden replica hidden replica even you cannot read remotely i have a machine let me explain this you know i never seen this anyway but you need to know we can configure it i'll show it off you have one primary one secondary and Oh, one hidden within the data center as you make it hidden data will sync all the data good enough but i you have a application server application server cannot hit this you wanted to call this mongo you wanted to run pick up the data out of it you had to call from the local application only and then read the data data is absolutely readable from the local copy but not remote hidden will be designed for only backups you wanted to generate only backups on this one keep the hidden and then keep it dedicated for only backups no other purpose with that or else you have a reporting services you are running locally and pulling it off and sending it to someone okay that also will be fine in the hidden concept but hidden con hidden mongo d equally receives the data and it it is not remotely detectable Re remote connections cannot be accepted on the hidden mongo replica node secondary replica node and hidden can be cannot become a primary because remote connections cannot hit it. So if you want it to become a hidden, first make it priority zero, then hidden. Two conditions must be given. It should be priority zero, should not become primary, and hidden. Both should be true. Hidden, there are two properties we have. Hidden and priority. Both priority should be zero. It should not never become a primary. If it becomes a primary applications, all connections will break. It cannot accept the remote connections. That is first thing is priority zero. Then hidden means you cannot read remotely only locally you can read it this is only dedicated for the backups only i never seen i never seen in my whole career conferring a mongod as a hidden node but it is there you need to know what exactly it is the purpose behind any question okay so hidden member maintains a copy of a primary data but it is invisible to client client application it is not remotely connect connect it cannot connect remotely as simple as it is hidden members are good for workloads with the different uses patterns from the other member replica sets basically hidden members must always be priority zero member and so cannot become a primary this is what i was saying hidden members however may vote in election use hidden members for dedicated tasks such as reporting and backups you wanted to run the reporting locally then use hidden you wanted to use that node completely for the backup set use it because backup sets run in the backup local machine itself I mean, it triggered in the local machine. In the following five member replica set, all four secondary members will have the copies of the primary data set, but one of the secondary member is hidden. This is hidden, and this is absolutely priority zero and hidden. 
this should be true and if these two should be true it can only read within the machine remote connections cannot be made and you have to run anything on that one the local application install the local application call the data and whatever you do want it to do it's for the dedicated action i never seen personally you implementing this but knowing is important thing delayed this is something we have used this thing especially let's talk about see guys this is very very important delayed replica is important to know because this is implemented i've seen as well this is a primary this is a secondary this is also another secondary so i'm delaying a one hour here data one hour delay a two hours delay maximum three hours will go with i never seen more than that depends on the op lock capability you have we had talked about this is a journal this is a data and this is op lock op lock will come with a particular size this size how many hours it can hold the data based on the number of transactions hitting that at that moment it all, it all matters but there is a command if you run that command it will tell you that based on the number of transactions coming to the lock file it will tell you that these many hours this log can hold the data it will give a rough estimation there is a command if you query this that command it will tell you that based on the current rate of transaction the op log is capable of holding these many hours data these many hours data it can hold based on number of transactions based on the current size of the log file this is an estimator command it will it will tell you the clear time this many hours data op log is holding if you hit more transactions it will tell you lesser time if you more less transactions more time it will display automatically it will detect automatically live transaction and give you the estimation time it can hold so basically at least at least 22 hours to one day data op log will maintain that's how it will be designed okay if you are 1 tb data 50 gb log is something is a operation to operation basically so mongo is not something you know you write every second they do load the data at one time and the rest of the time it will be free or minimal transactions basically anyway the thing is we wanted to keep delayed replica a delayed replica if someone is deleted a database here someone deleted accidentally the database deletion also will happen in the secondary what if we do exact thing will happen in the secondaries but i kept three hours delayed three hours after what if we do here it reflect here after three hours because we are intentionally delaying the time we will mention the time so if i do a mistake here i can recover within three hours here from here that is the only intention delayed replica for bad operations we wanted to recover out of that bad operation from the delayed replica that is only intention nothing else any questions let me know questions if not let's go to the slide in that case uh, you need to stop the primary first right because primary no, 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 no. we don't stop everything is on you delete a database you realized within one hour there are three hours delayed replica if i delete here it will delete immediately here it is not delayed but this is delayed it will be there for next three hours all the data Mm -hmm. you pick up the dump from here before it deletes here and then restore it here again primary recovery data recovery got it so in mongo you have only full backup there is no differential no logs nothing replica said you have log backup called op log backup we have it okay we'll see that but there is no differential backup mongo in terms of recovery rdb is so sophisticated in terms of recovery mongo is not sophisticated there are recovery challenges we have with the mongo i'm going to talk about that in this model and the backup restore also both recovery challenges anyway the delayed member sorry ahead. like i know like your yeah, mongo db is used for more more of no sql so there, you're saying there's no log backup i mean like hourly backup or... we have we have hourly backup from the op log we can database. take it if it is standalone there is no op log backup or nothing only full dump all the time you don't take full dump every one hour right only once in a day so you lose you are compromising one day data so that is the reason all productions will operate with the replica set so minimum okay. all productions will operate with production to protect the data because standalone does not give you the recovery points Applica, replica set can give you the recovery points we'll see that 
delayed members contain the copy of the replica set data obviously delayed members data set reflect an earlier delayed set state of the uh, data set basically delayed means obviously we are mentioning a time based on the tail pickup we can read how long it is delayed when we are we have a command guys for everything we have a command how long is a second is absolutely in sync or how many minutes behind it so how delayed replica how, how the second is getting delayed to get the data everything we can monitor we have all monitoring commands we're going to show that a delayed member can make it possible to recover unsuccessful application upgrades or operations errors including drop database or collections anything you do on the primary by mistake you can recover from the secondary before it reflects before it happens on the secondary on the delayed replica a delayed replica should not become a primary again because always it operates with the data gap some hours gap so it should be come with the priority zero first then delayed we have to mention the time delayed members apply operations from the op log on a delay how it up we can see how much delay it is behind based on the time you mention it will mention the same thing we'll see that consider that amount of delay must be equal to greater than your maintenance window maintenance window means your op log window op log window is just having one hour you're keeping three hours you're gone it will at least generally it will keep to 20 to 22 hours data that's how we design 20 to 22 hours data then you'll keeping three hours no harm it should not be closed like it has a three six hours data you're keeping three hours at a time you are loading a lot of data it is flushed before three hours then this will not sync up anymore so at least it has to sustain that long whatever you uh, delay you keep it the op log that that is it must not be <clears throat> it must be smaller than the capacity of the op log smaller the op log is more and the delay should be lesser all the time next delayed replica configuration uh, this is something how do you do it when we start uh, when we start itself i'm going to tell this is when we don't understand priority hidden slave delay everything must be true why this we will see that the following example set <coughs> example set one hour delay and the second 36 hundred seconds equivalent to one hour second remember currently at the index zero member array the delay the set the delay issue the following sequence of no need to worry i'll skip this i'll show practically right this is what i was talking this is what exactly i was talking uh this is anyway we are done guys this is so simple slides anyway just let me take a little five minutes extra right concerns these right concerns are comes from the application you cannot define at the back end right concern describe the guarantee that mongodb provides the reporting on the success of the operation if you are writing you wanted to write in the primary only you wanted to write and secondary also get the uh, acknowledgement you wanted to do the acknowledgement from memory itself journal itself we have a lot of things guys how they want it they have to define it with the stronger right concerns client wait for the sending right operation from the mongodb to confirm so before i come to this let's come to this one these 12 then i'll come to this see there are unacknowledged acknowledged journal and replica acknowledged there are four right types of concerns we have right concerns are four unacknowledged they had to write the concern like this they mentioned the right concern see when they mention this majority right time out so w w is a something right concern they'll have to mention the connection when they are passing it so what happens try to understand unacknowledged with unacknowledged right concern mongodb does not acknowledge the receipt of the operation another similar to error ignored see you submitted an action you never get the response in the background it could be it could have been failed it could have been successful we don't know you never get the response from the mongo at all you just unacknowledge me just submit the action let it happen i don't happen i don't care just anna don't give me acknowledgement just you submit it is either passed or, or failed whatever it is you don't want that is called unacknowledged no one will use this even pre prod also they need some confirmation whether the transaction is finished not finished kind of acknowledged acknowledged is something what it done what it done either it is successful or not successful you'll get the message at least you're running update update you're trying to update which does not exist a record or it does not uh, uh, the collection itself does not exist you're trying to update it has to you need to get some message like these many records are modified you you have seen that when i'm inserting it these many inserts are record happen when updating these many updates are happening it will give in the output it will give acknowledgement like that message so you need an acknowledgement 
with the receipt of acknowledgement rights concern mongodb confirms that it received the right operation and applied the change in the memory in view of the data see the driver is giving the uh, command to the mongodb mongodb is responding back here there is no reply there is no reply success or unsuccessful it doesn't know it does not care about it giving the acknowledgement to the application again here it definitely gives the acknowledgement okay either you fail or successful you get the message and general this is something which is very important that is what we are talking about general all the time general then go to the application application this is called default <laughs> sorry guys sorry general with a general right concern mongodb acknowledges the right operation only after committing the data to general this is what exactly i was making a point you are writing the data and data from the memory is written to a general then application will get the response if it is failed from the memory itself will respond it does not go to the general because it is failed but if it is committed it has to write in the general go to the application this is a default mongodb acknowledgement model this is what by default will happen but this is what they have to mention if they want it they don't want this they can mention this in the connection string now if you come to here replica acknowledged it has to commit in the primary write into the general and go to the secondary see here writing it apply here it will write in the general go to the secondary apply in the secondary then come back and give the response you are giving the replica you know one of the replica must be applied with the transaction you keep you know zero means here memory acknowledgement right concern one means general acknowledgement two means replica one replica acknowledgement three maximum three only two replicas should be acknowledged i mean it is written in the primary it went to the secondary secondary also two secondaries are written they acknowledge to the primary primary acknowledgement to the application it is too lengthy operation you're delaying the action by giving the more right concern data is guaranteed that in the background it is written in synchronous but you see the lot of blocking why because you are locking the collection data for longer time for getting the acknowledgement but that time the collection is locked other people are going into the blocking more concern right concern more blockings why because more the longer the keep the lock more longer more blockings will happen so this is not good advisable generally they should go the general acknowledged only generally but if they wanted very they are doing very critical data operation they want it to be replicated they can mention it the blocking can happen but the intentional activity that is that is fine let's come back to this one now with a stronger right concern client wait for after sending the right operation to mongodb to confirm the right operations when insert update deletions have a weak concern operations runs quickly they don't need to go on second reason verify or write into the general and then verify just memory to it will give the acknowledgement the weaker the concern the quicker the action mongodb provides different levels of right concern to better address the specific needs of the application clients may adjust the right of concern to ensure that most important operation persists successfully in an entire mongodb deployment so it is critical you wanted to get the acknowledgement then only you wanted to commit then mention it in the uh, operation itself for the less critical application client adjust the right concern to ensure that faster performance than the end user persistence to the entire deployment you don't need you don't need the performance don't go with higher concern you if you wanted the performance you don't need the performance you wanted the guaranteed data in all the second is also go on for the higher it is up to the requirement you cannot define that default right concern is actually general acknowledged right that we talked about now modifying the right concerns basically when you give the majority here there should be time out uh, here time out is given 500 milliseconds means 5 seconds it will write to update the secondary 5 milli uh, 5 seconds if 5 seconds the secondary is not responding then skip that skip that majority and then go with the acknowledgement if you don't mention this it will go in the infinite loop it will wait for writing the secondary if it is not writing it will fail because you are not handling the timeout you must handle the timeout when you go for the replica set acknowledged or else you go for any other acknowledgement which is not default you have to give the timeout so that must be if not they are gone ah uh, this is what exactly i was talking about. replication blocking mongodb get lost error command allows the developers to enforce the guarantee how up to data replication is updating right concern see 
here we run the get last error will uh, will block until uh, here we run the get last error that will block until at least n servers have replicated last write operation so we are sending that we are telling that these many write concerns number is saying that how many servers you wanted to replicate before i get the acknowledgement primary itself are one secondary or two secondaries maximum two secondaries you can tell three is a maximum zero is memory acknowledged one is a general acknowledged two is a one replica set acknowledged three is a two replica set acknowledged so if n is to the master won't respond to the command until at least one slave has a replicated data last operation see replication happens basically the more write concern the more blockings will happen basically you are locking the particular data segment or collection whatever it is for longer time when you are longer time placing the lock other people go into the queue the queue itself is a blocking following or not following say something this is important yeah, following. right uh, when specifying the get last error takes additional parameters timeout which is a timeout of a blocking for replication will cause the right concern to see here blocking for the replication will cause the right operation to slow down significantly particularly for large values of the more value you give it here like it start with 0 1 2 3 the more value the more weight the more weight more blocking as simple as this you don't maintain it it is from the application itself read write concerns this is what i was talking again when you have a three members which one to read which one means uh, you want to read from secondary or primary itself we can mention that in the connection string we have all the things use the read concern option to specify you want to read from the local or replica set member or what you wanted to read to specify the read concern at mongo shell level db dot collection and read concern they have to mention extra cursor read concern dot read concern what level primary you wanted to read or secondary you wanted to read where you wanted to read or majority of the secondaries you wanted to verify see read concern or multiple levels again uh, let me come to this and then come back to this prefer see primary preferred for read read preferences here primary preferred means i want to read from the primary only free uh, prefer secondary prefer secondary means only secondary if secondary is available then only read it They'll, else don't read it secondary preferred secondary preferred means secondary is available read from secondary if secondary is not available read from primary preferred is something different only secondary is different if i'm keeping primary preferred guys i can read from primary if primary is down secondary there is no primary at all because voting is not happened secondary is available go and read because preferred means that in some situations operations read from the primary but if primary is unavailable read from secondary member secondary only means all operations read from secondary member only if secondary is not available don't read it it will not read anyway secondary definitely will be available at any point of time in mongo primary may not available but secondary will be available uh, second preferred in most situations operations read from secondary members but if no secondary members are available operations read from the primary okay nearest nearest means if my application there are multiple secondary nodes I wanted to hit the nearest to secondary server to get the data. I never seen this nearest one, but anyway, operations read from the members of replica set with the least network latency, nearest one. Let's come back to here again. Uh, this one. So locality. See here, read concern, local. Local means the uh, you have a, you know read concern. One level is a primary or secondary. Read concern, local or majority local means whatever the member you are trying to read it can be secondary or memory uh, whatever the data is available on the local machine get it i don't care about what is there just local on the on which machine i'm trying to read majority is something it will read from the secondary only but it will check for two or three secondary members i'm reading one secondary other secondary also have the same data or not it is checking it then it is reading it comparing the secondary service data whatever is the recent, latest data it has it will pick up from there it is a too tricky discussion anyway you just to keep in mind that's it nothing else you have to carry from this why because in you never case, handle this in this case we have primary and secondary and third is just a kind of witness so it is going to compare with the primary yes uh, in this case if, if you have only one secondary there is no comparison primary it won't go only prime secondaries only 
all secondaries where, wherever all secondaries have the you know i'm reading from one secondary you have one more secondary then this secondary is having the latest data other secondary having the data it will compare both wherever uh, more recent data it will read from there so, so compare and read so practically as you said that uh, it's going to be three node replications so this scenario is never going to happen right so it won't happen majority only in the local itself even you apply it is local only because only one secondary is available it does not compare the primary if it compares primary always primary will hold the latest data so there is no meaning in it mm -hmm. so it won't go to the primary only secondaries it will inquire multiple secondaries then this will make sense majority so next uh, read references how do they mention it actually when they're reading it they'll keep this mongo dot set read reference to set the read operations and see read references describe how mongod clients root read operation to the members of the replica set which member you want to read from by default an operation directs to the primary only by default primary all the cases but you have to you have to mention that what you wanted to read from where you wanted to read from the application side it's not our job for an application does not require fully up, up to date data can improve the read throughput or reduce the latency on disturbing uh, by distrib distributing some of the read to the secondaries members of the replica set so you wanted to redirect secondaries the read operations writes to the primary so you are distributing the load so it will give a good performance right mongo shell read preference cursor method provides access to the read preferences they have to mention this basically when they're calling it a list of modes given in the next slide this is the one this is the one we're talking about right so i'll finish it guys there is nothing much in the further slides rollback okay rollback i'll uh, i mean rollback we will see during the as a scenario only i don't talk about this deployment studies also i don't talk okay these are all uh, situation we're done with the theory then these are all situational these are all si scenarios these slides are all scenarios strategies and we are going to wanted to change the op log why we wanted to change job log and automatically sync a member like you know, one member went out of sync how do we sync it again racing completely we'll see all of that so till this point keep in mind the rest will be covered as a scenario okay so we did with the theory part tomorrow is absolutely practical i'll clean all my notes to keep as a plain thing and then i'll start from the scratch what i do i'll build a new node i'll make it as a see we have three nodes already i build one node i'll delete it i'll build in front of you all i'll change the host no host name i'll change the ip and everything i'll make it as a another node and then add it to the replica set it will go with the encryption and it has a lot of interesting configuration we'll see that tomorrow very important class any question before i stop yes so one question i have uh, how the licensing differs to generally in rdbms uh, if uh, secondary is like uh, not read only then uh, we don't get uh, we, need, we don't need to pay the license how how works it here the right if it is enterprise then only licensing will apply here if it is enterprise standard you use n number of servers and n amount of ram or cpus doesn't does not matter to the mongo mongo company what matters enterprise enterprise they are charging based on the ram how much ram you are using based on the charge depends on the ram not on the cpu not on anything how much ram you are using for the product based on that they are doing the licensing like it is secondary or whatever it is you are deploying or on replica set you are using 420 400 gb 400 gb 800 gb then you pay that amount for both for enterprise is costly and they do the ram based licensing not the cpu based so the ram is counted for both the replica set and the primary yes yes both both that is where you need to look at which is best option for you enterprise or standard is a great data okay i'm i'm getting too much business i'm i'm, I'm i can easily pay it then go for the enterprise no i cannot afford because this is not generating too much money but i need the data in that case go for the community so it all it's a business call we don't call on that option basically what data is critical they know it as a business we will implement it they, we are the only the implementers we don't we are not decision makers which community edition our enterprise edition is decided by the business because which is giving the revenue which is not giving they know it 
right okay right any other questions 